Hello friends! Welcome to Storytime! Have you ever been on a trip and stayed at a hotel? Was it a good place to rest and relax? Well today, I'm going to introduce a very special hotel. It's located in the desert. Today's book is called Cactus Hotel by Brenda Z. Giberson. Let's explore this hotel together! On a hot, dry day in the desert, a bright red fruit falls from a tall suwaro cactus. Plop! It splits apart on the sandy floor. Two thousand black seeds glisten in the sunlight. When the air cools in the evening, an old pack rat comes out and eats the juicy fruit. Then he skitters across the sand. A seed left clinging to his whiskers falls off under a Palo Verde tree. It is a good place for the seed to drop. A spotted ground squirrel looking for something to eat does not see it. A house finch chirping high in the Palo Verde does not see it. After many dry days, a heavy rain falls on the desert. Soon, a young cactus sprouts up from the ground. Slowly, slowly, the seedling grows. The Palo Verde protects it from the hot summer sun and cold winter nights. After 10 years, the cactus is only four inches high. It is just big enough for desert ants to climb its spiny sides. After a rainstorm, when the desert blooms with color, the cactus pulls in water with its long roots and looks fat. A young pack rat stops to drink the water that drips off the tree. Then she scurries off, looking for a dry place to make a nest. When there is no rain, the cactus uses up the water it has stored inside and looks thin. The Palo Verde loses its tiny leaves, but there is always some shade for the cactus below. After 25 years, the cactus is two feet tall. A jackrabbit cools off beside it and gnaws on the green pulp. But when a coyote moves in the distance, the jackrabbit disappears into a nearby hole. After 50 years, the cactus stands 10 feet tall and looks straight and strong beside the old Palo Verde. For the very first time, brilliant white and yellow flowers appear at the top of the cactus. Every spring from now on, the flowers will open for one night only and then close in the heat of the day. They beckon like a welcoming signal across the desert. At different times of the day and night, birds, bees, and bats come for the nectar. The flowers dry up, and after a month, the bright red fruit, filled with black seeds, is ripe and ready. A Gila woodpecker comes to eat. He looks around the cactus and decides to stay. He has found the perfect place in the desert to begin a new hotel. The woodpecker goes right to work, and the only tool he uses is his long, hard beak. Tap, tap, tap! He bores into the flesh of the cactus. Tap, tap, tap! He digs deep inside to make a space that is comfortable and roomy. The cactus is not harmed. 
it forms a tough scab all around the hole to protect itself from drying out. The woodpecker gets a weatherproof nest that is shady on hot days and warm and insulated on frosty nights. And the cactus gets something in return. The woodpecker likes to eat the insects that can bring disease to the cactus. After 60 years, the Cactus Hotel is 18 feet tall. To add more space, it begins to grow an arm. A woodpecker has a new hole in the trunk. Farther up, a white-winged dove makes a nest on the arm. And down below, an old hole is discovered by an elf owl. The birds feel safe living high up in a prickly plant where nothing can reach them. All around the desert, there are holes of every size for ants and mice, lizards and snakes, rabbits and foxes. After 150 years, there are holes of every size in the cactus too. The giant plant has finally stopped growing it is 50 feet tall, with seven long branches. It weighs eight tons, about as much as five automobiles. Everybody wants to live in the Cactus Hotel. Birds lay eggs and pack rats raise their young. Even insects and bats live there. When one animal moves out, another moves in and every spring they come for a special treat of nectar and juicy red fruit. Finally, after 200 years, the old cactus sways in a gust of wind and falls with a thud to the sandy floor. Its great thorny arms crumble in the crash. The creatures that lived up high must find other homes. But those that prefer to live down low move right in. A millipede, a scorpion, and many ants and termites quickly find homes in the toppled hotel. After many months, all that remains are the wooden ribs that supported the cactus while it stood so tall. A collared lizard dashes over the top looking for insects. A ground snake huddles in the shade below. And all around there is a forest of cacti slowly, slowly growing in the desert. Through hot and cold, wet and dry, some will survive long enough to become other cactus hotels. Did you notice how the desert animals needed a place to rest when they got tired? They use the giant cactus as their hotel in the desert. How do the animals help the cactus? That's right, they help protect it by eating the pests that could harm the cactus. It's a good way to help each other. I hope you enjoyed visiting the Cactus Hotel with me. Until next time, bye!